Hello, and welcome to Quick Hits, a podcast from Borealis Threat and Risk Consulting in Ottawa, Canada. I'm your host, Phil Gursky, president of Borealis. This is episode number 14, an episode that came to me this morning. This is January the 20th, 2020, when I read a very interesting article in the January 11th edition of The Economist, a magazine I've been reading for the better part of 40 years since I started my career as a translator slash intelligence analyst. And the article was in the Middle East and Africa section, and it was about some terrorist attacks that had taken place in Kenya recently, attacks that were carried out by Al-Shabaab, which is the main Sunni Islamist terrorist group that operates within Somalia and in the Horn of Africa. It has been around since the mid-2000s, created after the Ethiopian decision to invade Somalia in 2005, and has been very active as of late in Somalia, and also in northeastern Kenya, where it's carried out attacks against universities, against office buildings, against shopping malls, against even a, a military base where the U.S. Is, is based and helping Kenyan forces. So Kenya is part of AMISOM, which is an African Union mission in Somalia to help the Somali government fight terrorism. And these attacks that have been carried out by Al-Shabaab are serve as a warning to Kenya to stop meddling in affairs that are not its own. Al-Shabaab has told Kenya to withdraw its forces or else it will continue to carry out attacks against Kenyan military forces, police and civilians to send a message. The, the article in The Economist talked about these attacks and it contained a very interesting piece of analysis by an individual named Rashid Abdi, who at one point worked for the International Crisis Group, which is a very well-respected and well-known outfit, that think tank, that deals with a whole bunch of issues, including international security. But he claims, and I quote, the attacks in Kenya may have been a signal to Iran that al-Shabaab is interested in a covert tactical alliance. That's what I want to deal with today. Not just what Mr. Abdi had to say, but whether or not this information or this analysis, this opinion, in fact, is backed up. You know, there's a phrase that's been around for a very, very long time. It actually dates back to... 17th century when uh, David Hume wrote uh, a wise man proportions his belief to the evidence and no testimony is sufficient to establish a miracle unless the testimony to be of such a kind that its falsehood would be more miraculous than the fact which it endeavors to establish. What does that mean? Well it means that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. This is also a phrase that was popularized by Carl Sagan, the American astronomer, And it's one that I happen to believe in. So what does this all mean? What this means is that if you're going to say something that goes against the grain or that is out there in left field, to use a baseball analogy, or that is so strange, you have to back it up with something. And in all all due honesty, I have a hard time believing that Al-Shabaab is entertaining any kind of alliance, covert, overt, tactical, strategic, with Iran. So why would Mr. Abdi say this? It is really quite unclear. What I find interesting is that the Al-Shabaab attacks in northeastern Kenya did happen to occur more or less at the same time as the recent tension between the United States and Iran, i.e. the American killing of IRGC General Qasem Soleimani, the Iranian retaliation against Iraqi air bases where the U.S. had been stationed, and of course the unfortunate downing of the Ukrainian passenger aircraft by an Iranian surface-to-air missile battery a few weeks ago. The other other problem here is that just because two events happen to coincide more or less in time doesn't mean they're linked. In other words, correlation does not equal causation. So why am I so dismissive of this this notion that Al-Shabaab might in fact be getting into bed with Iran? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First and foremost, Al-Shabaab does not need Iran. It has been active, as I mentioned, in the area for the better part of 15 years. And despite the efforts by Amazon, the Somali National Army, and U.S. assistance in the region, it is as active now as it ever has been. It's been carrying out attacks on a regular basis, some massive attacks, some smaller attacks, and it feels very emboldened to actually go into Kenya and carry out attacks against armed bases, including bases where the United States has some of its troops. So this is not an organization that's shy. It's not an organization that appears to need outside assistance. Secondly, and this is another important point to make, Al-Shabaab is firmly in the Al-Qaeda orbit firmly in the Al-Qaeda universe. In fact, Al-Qaeda senior management recently praised Al-Shabaab for its work in the Horn of Africa. 
essentially encouraged it to carry out more terrorist attacks and, and is essentially behind the organization 100%. Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, al-Shabaab is a Sunni Islamist terrorist organization. Iran is a Shia theocratic state. And as I've mentioned on several occasions in earlier podcasts and on some of my blogs on my website, www.borealsthreatenrisk.com, to a Sunni Islamist extremist, your number one target is not the West, and it's not Christians, and it's not Jews. It's actually Shia Muslims. Sunni Islamist extremists see Shia Muslims as apostates. They see them as the enemies of Islam. And if you look at the numbers in terms of a country like Iraq, which is a Shia dominant country, I would argue that I'm not sure I don't have the stats to, to back this up, but I would be very surprised if the majority of victims of Sunni Islamist extremist attacks in Iraq are not, in fact, Iraqi Shia. The hatred goes deep. It goes long. And for that reason, I have a really hard time getting to a place where a Sunni Islamist terrorist organization like Al-Shabaab, which has been supported financially, theologically, ideologically by Al-Qaeda, a Sunni Islamist extremist organization, would all of a sudden turn to Iran as a patron. It doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't seem to be backed up by any information whatsoever. I respect Mr. Abdi as a quote-unquote independent expert. I respect the International Crisis Group for which he once worked. But I can't get there from here. And, as I said at the beginning, extraordinary evidence, or rather extraordinary claims, require extraordinary evidence. Now, it's not impossible. As I've said on many occasions, never say never. Iran, in fact, has cooperated with and sponsored Sunni Islamist groups like Hamas, which operates in, the, in, in Gaza and other parts of the Middle East. And maybe that makes sense because their Hamas targets Israel and Iran doesn't like Israel. But I just don't see this relationship, if, if we can call it that, whether it's incipient or whether it is a little more mature, I just don't see it happening between al-Shabaab and Iran. Therefore, until such time as somebody comes up with some really good information, open source information, since neither you nor I have access to intelligence, I used to, I don't have it anymore, I'm going to come, firmly on, come down firmly on the side that al-Shabaab is not seeking a quote-unquote covert tactical alliance with Iran or with anybody else for that matter. It's doing very well on its own, thank you very much, and doesn't need to complicate things by dealing with Iran. That's my view on this particular story. I'd be curious what you have to, th what to say about it. You can reach me on Gmail, borealisrisk at gmail.com. You can reach me on Twitter at Borealis Saves, on LinkedIn, or on Facebook. I also encourage you to go to my website, as mentioned, www.borealisthreatenrisk.com, where you can subscribe to all the information, all the podcasts, all the blogs, the Today in Terrorism feature that, I've been, that I have been constructing since the last fall, and which will continue until the indefinite future. It's all free of charge. Just go to the subscribe button, fill in your information, and all this stuff will be sent to your inbox. Look forward to hearing from you soon. We'll talk again. Until then, stay safe.